I'm Harrison Graham, and on today's episode of Chicago Bears Now, we're going to hand out some Bears free agency grades for the notable moves that have happened, you know, the Matt Pryors of the world. I'm not going to analyze and break those ones down in deep detail, but I am going to include the three trades Ryan Poles has made, including Ryan Bates. So this will be kind of in chronological order as things have happened, starting, you know, just in the days leading up to free agency. So We'll get to that nine grades in total that we're going to hand out here. And I want to know how you guys feel about Ryan Poles at this point. Do you like Ryan Poles as the Bears GM? If so, like this video. Let's get 1,000 likes on today's show. And if you don't, tell me why in the comments uh, that you do not like him as the general manager. Okay, let's get to some Bears free agency grades. Again, chronological order. Let's go with Ryan Bates. They traded a fifth-round pick for him. I'm going to give it a solid B. Solid's kind of the word I would use for this grade. It's not the sexy move, but versatile player who can play center, he can play guard, he can uh, start, he can come off the bench. I think his best role is like your top interior backup, and if he needs to start, which Tevin Jenkins' injury history, Nate Davis' injury history, he can plug and play. And I think the reason I'd give this a solid B is because he's got two years and eight million left on his deal, so that's pretty good money for a quality backup. Like, you're not paying that much. And B, a lot of draft experts and scouting across the league, and I think the Bears have shown this with the moves they've made, is teams view this as like a four-round draft, maybe a five-round draft, because what's been talked about a lot is that a lot of players in college still have COVID years that they're finishing up this year. NIL is convincing players that would go later in the draft to stay an extra year rather than committing early. This was a record year in terms of underclassmen uh, not declaring for the draft. So people think next year it'll kind of teeter back to the norm, which is I think also why the Justin Fields trade, which we'll get to in a little bit, was for next year's draft, not this year's. Um, so I think when you factor that in too, Ryan Bates for a fifth or finding a quality lineman in the fifth, what's more likely in this draft? Probably just trading for Ryan Bates, who's not making a ton of money anyway. Now, I would still think Coleman Shelton ends up being the starting center, at least for now, but – Bates will have a chance to compete. He can play both guard spots. So, again, solid B grade, nothing special, but uh, I think the value is pretty good here. Jalen Johnson contract extension. Got to go A-plus here. Listen, it is not often where you franchise tag a player, especially a premium one, a guy who just was named to the All-Pro team, second-team All-Pro, and you extend him a few days after, and the annual value – is less than the tag number. The tag was $19.8 million. You got him at $19 million per year. That's pretty rare. The reason you tag him is because you don't want to go to the number that the client is usually asking for. So that's pretty good negotiating by the Bears. The cap hit in year one is less than $14 million. That's really good as well. Good deal for Jalen, too, though. He gets a lot of cash up front. I think he gets over $40 million in his first two years. $20 million signing bonus, I believe. So not like Jalen Johnson lost out here. It's still a really good deal for him as well, especially with minor injury concerns. But I thought the Bears did good here. This is a home run to get this done. To go from a guy who demanded a trade at the trade deadline to getting him locked up after having an all-pro season, job well done to Ryan Poles uh, to kind of calm the waters there and uh, wrap that thing up. All right, let's get to the Kevin Byard signing now. B-plus from me. I almost went A-minus, but he is coming off a bit of a down year uh, with Philadelphia after they traded for him at the trade deadline. Two years, $15 million. By the way, his cap hit for this year did come in. It's like 6.7, 6.8, so a little bit less than the $7.5 million per year that he's making. Um, what I like about it is, sure, he's not his all-pro self anymore, but – He's still better than Eddie Jackson, and you got him for less than half the cost. Uh, that's, a, that's, that's solid. Clear upgrade. He's cheaper, like I just said. And you listen to him talk at his presser, and you're just like, yeah, this guy's going to fit in. He's missed zero games in his career. He's missed one practice in his career for the birth of one of his kids. That's it. And uh, he's going to be a better player. So he's more durable, better tackler. Uh, just as good in coverage at this point in his career uh, than Bojack was. He's going to be able to make the calls in that secondary. So, uh, yeah, I, I really like that move, and I like how they got it done the night before the start of free agency. Who's going to have more interceptions in 2024? Byard has 28 in his career, but last year Jalen outpicked him 4-1. to one. 
Ideally, it's Jalen Johnson because uh, he's the guy who's ascending as a player. Type JJ for Jalen Johnson, KB for Kevin Byer. Let us know who you think is going to have more picks this season. DeAndre Swift. We're going to go ahead and give him a B plus uh, for that signing. You could argue at the time it felt like a slight overpay, but when you saw how the running back market played out, Josh Jacobs, 12 a year. Uh, Saquon Barkley, almost 13. The only other like solid back and free agency that went for less that had better value was Derrick Henry, but he's got four times the carries of DeAndre Swift in his career, so it's not that shocking that Henry got a little bit less. What Swift is going to provide is – just more decisiveness, I think, as a runner, a guy who gives you more burst, and perhaps more importantly for a rookie quarterback, a guy you can dump the ball off to, a guy who catches the ball nicely out of the backfield like DeAndre Swift does. So you plug him in as RB1. Um, Khalil Herbert slides back, in my opinion, to that RB2 role, which is where he really flourished his first two years uh, behind David Montgomery. I thought that was a uh, natural fit. Uh, for Khalil Herbert uh, in that role is kind of that change of pace, RB2. Uh, and uh, Roshan Johnson still in there as RB3. Gerald Everett next up here. He gets an A- minus from me. Um, I think when you factor in value and just like clear upgrade from what you had, Gerald Everett's going to be tough to beat, uh, tied in two-wise. You get him at $6 million per year, only 6.1 guaranteed. So it's basically a one plus one here. And he is so much better and more consistent than what Robert Tunyon has been uh, in recent years, and especially last year. Like, it's not even close. Uh, Everett basically averages, like, 46 catches, 450 yards, and three touchdowns over his past five seasons. Uh, that's pretty damn good as a U tight end and a number two tight end on this uh, depth chart. So you get Cole Komet some help there. Still got to get tight end three. I don't think Steven Carlson's going to end up being that guy. I guess you never know, but... Maybe Mercedes Lewis comes back. Maybe you draft somebody. We'll see. But uh, Gerald Everett for the price and just clear upgrade at the position, I thought that was really, really good. We got FGB t-shirts available because FGB, FGB. We hate the Packers on this show. You guys know the drill. Chatsports.com slash FGB. Represent it down in the comment section. All right, let's get to the next one here. That is Coleman Shelton, that signing. I'm going to go B on this move. The price tag's really good. One year, $3 million bucks for a guy who's a starting center in this league. He's not a great player, but he's an upgrade, and the value is really good. Like He's probably like a C-plus, B-minus center in this league. But the value here is like a B plus, A minus. So you kind of average that out. I give it a B. Um, he's better than Lucas Patrick and Cody Whitehair there. Is he a guy you want starting for the next five years at center? Probably not. But for one year and three million bucks, he knows the scheme. Uh, I certainly uh, am not upset at that move whatsoever. All right, let's get Brett Rippon in here. We won't spend much time. C minus. I'm not going to give it a failing grade because it's going to be a vet minimum. Probably no guaranteed money uh, for Brett Rippon. Uh, he stinks. You don't want him to play, kind of like Nathan Peterman, but he at least a tick better than Nathan Peterman. Teams clearly value him in the locker room, in the QB room, but he's cheap. So, okay, QB three. Uh, obviously, you're going to draft somebody uh, with that, that number one overall pick. I would still prefer a better veteran backup. On our Bears free agent targets video we put out Monday morning, I mentioned Ryan Tannehill, who's still out there at the, as of filming this video, if his price tag isn't that steep, I, I would bring him in here. And, you know, if, if, if Rippon asks to be released and looks for another opportunity, that's fine. Or if you want to keep him as your fourth guy uh, to get to the offseason, you can do that too. But uh, if you could get a veteran backup for a rookie quarterback, I think that that would show tremendous value in my opinion. C minus, it's not like it's a bad signing. It's just I don't know how much it actually gives you. All right, let's get to the two big trades that happened in the last few days. Keenan Allen. I'm going to go A. The only reason it's on A+, plus is because he will turn 32. But you get a top, even if you want to be conservative and say 15 receiver, 20. Well, last year he was top 10 receiver in this league. Let's say top 15 receiver for a fourth-round pick, number 110 overall. 
a guy who is super reliable when he's on the football field. That's probably another reason why it's on A-plus. He does have minor injury concerns. He's missed some time throughout his career. But in 13 games, he almost averaged 100 yards per game last year. I mean, that is remarkable production. This is as QB-friendly as a receiver as you have in this league. He's a man coverage beater. He finds the soft spots in zones, whether it's Caleb Williams, Drake Mayer, whoever. The fact that you have DJ Moore and Keenan Allen, two guys that separate pretty easily and give you yards after the catch, I mean, that's about as QB-friendly as you can get with the one-two punch. Keenan Allen works primarily out of the slot at this point in his career, and he just absolutely abuses nickel corners and safeties. So uh, I'm excited about this move, and uh, I think you guys should be as well. Justin Fields trade, I give it a C. It's a mixed bag here. The value, the return you got is probably, to be frank, an F or a D. It's not good. But the market's the market. You can't control that. Maybe if you traded him in you know, late January after your season ended, you could have gotten more. But you were early on in your evaluations of the draft prospects. You, you didn't know at that point what direction you were going in, most likely. The value is not great. We know that. Even if it turns into a fourth, that's not great. We, you know, I'd even in recent weeks, I was like, man, if you could even just get a third, I'd be, I'd be pretty happy with that at this point. But a sixth that could turn into a fourth, I don't think anybody's doing jumping jacks. But it sounds like Poles did him a solid, sent him to a place he wants to go. I think that matters in the locker room. I think they'll respect him for that. And it was time to move him. It had gotten toxic among the fan base. I think players on this team wanted clarity. And with all these pro days coming up, it, you know, you don't want that cloud hanging over your head if you have made the decision that you are going to draft somebody. It does right by Justin. He can go hit the ground running with the new team. Doesn't have to wait, hold him hostage until the draft or whatever. Um, you know, it sucks the market fell the way it was. It sucks the league didn't value him as much as the Bears did. But I think the timing of the trade brings the grade a little bit higher. There's no more confusion. Um, give it a C. Value's bad. Timing's good. Average it out, you get a C. Ultimately, if the guy you draft is good and you're winning games, you're not going to be concerned that you didn't get top value for Justin Fields. Grade the Bears free agency period so far. A, B, C, D, or F. Drop a letter grade down in the comments. How do you feel like the Bears have done up to this point in time? I think it's been good, man. I'd go like B+. Plus. Has it been perfect? No. Again, do you wish you would have gotten more for Fields? Yes. Are there a couple of free agents I would have liked to get my hands on that they didn't? Sure. Uh, but you get Keenan Allen, big-time move. Um, you get an upgrade at running back in DeAndre Swift. You go get Gerald Everett. Like you've made some quality moves without breaking the bank. Even Keenan Allen's $23 million cap hit, he's on a one-year deal. You can extend him to lower the cap hit, which is what I would do, or you have the money to absorb it. You can play this year out and – Make a decision after the year. It's not like it impacts your future in a major negative way. So uh, I'm excited about it. Let us know how you would grade the Bears free agency period.